first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. And today's mathematics is on Washita Law and jurisprudence. Let's go to the phone lines in order to bring my co-host, Brother Olabala. Are you here, brother? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Peace. Peace, God. Peace, God. How you doing tonight? Let me bring on my co-host, Grand Sheik, Brother R.L. Are you here? Greetings, brother. How you doing? Peace, God. Doing well. Doing well, God. How you doing? How you doing tonight? Grand Sheik. Very well. Very well, Brother Olabala. Yes, sir. Yeah, back again. <laughs> yes, sir, back brother. Again with some crazy science. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Ready. Yeah, so let's, get, let's get into this book. It's called The Creature from Jackal Island by G. Oh, Edward oh, Griffin. Yeah, The Creature oh, yeah. from Jackal Island. Right? This is the second look at the Federal Reserve. We spoke about um, the Federal Reserve um, and how they owned you. You know, last week, but this week we're going to go a little bit deeper. So it's going to be called The Creature from Jackal Island. Mm. All right. Written by G. Edward Griffin. Now, it's real simple. Um, what was passed at Jackal Island basically was, um, was the formation of the Federal Reserve Bank, actually. You know, always knows the Fed, you know, which mm-hmm. was the central banking system of the United States. It was created, uh, what, I think is December the 23rd, 1913, with the um, enactment of the Federal Reserve Act. Right. All right. So we want to talk about some of these players. Now, there's a, there's a United States Supreme Court case law from 1982. It's called Lewis versus United States. Lewis, L E W I S. Lewis versus United States, 680F.2D1239. And basically, mm. the court rules that the Federal Reserve is privately owned. That was that particular case. So let's get into who owned it. Behind some of it, because you know that Thomas Jefferson warned us. And for those who don't know, if you get the five Negro um, presidents, 
or the sixth black president by um, Sister um, Arset, um, and the five Negro presidents by um, J. Rogers, they go into the fact that Thomas Jefferson actually was a Moor, hmm. right? And that um, John Adams claimed that t- um, Thomas Jefferson was the son of a half-breed Indian squaw, you know what I'm saying, and a Virginia mulatto father. Okay. All right. So therefore, excuse, you know, so you we have the excuse to Europeanized painting in which that we have seen of Thomas Jefferson. All right. So Jefferson was basically telling us if the American people ever allowed the private banks to control the issuing of their currency, first by inflation and then by deflation, the banks and corporations will grow up around them and they will deprive the people of all their property until their children will wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. Mm-hmm. Why? Wow. Right. Right, so, that was an interesting quote. Yes, it was. Hmm. Now, we know that in, um, it was around, what, October 1907, that several banking firms basically got together, like one was called um, the Knickerbocker Trust Company of New York, um, in which that collapsed as, um, you know, funds was being withdrawn and because of fear and unwise investment and the misuse of money, it was lines of people waiting for the front, at the front doors of the Knickerbocker um, Bank to close, you know, to find out that their um, bank accounts was closed. And days later, the Trust um, Company of America um, had droves of... um, those who deposit money, removing their money, and then shortly thereafter, a um, a run took place at the Lincoln Trust Company, and across the country, um, panic basically continued, and so they was trying to find a way in order to stop the spread of this panic, mm-hmm. in which that was occurring. So in the fall of 1907, the United States which was already in a recession, um, what happened was that they came up with the concept of the Federal Reserve Bank. And the major players of that, <laughs> let's go into them. Um, you have Paul Warburg, all right? And Paul Warburg said, whoever controls the volume of money in any country is the absolute master of all industry and commerce. Yes, sir. Now, Warburg, that's the Jew. But Paul Warburg was one of the ones in which that um, in which that became part of the families, the eight families in which that brought together the Federal Reserve Bank. Then, you, of course, you had Senator Nelson Aldrich. All right? Um, you had Benjamin Strong. You had Frank Vanderlip. You had J.P. Morgan, and as a matter of fact, it was at J.P. Morgan's um, home on Jackal Island where this summit was held at for the construction of the Federal Reserve Bank. Mm-hmm. You have um, um, Henry P. Um, Davison and Charles D. Norton. All right, and so those were the individuals, and um, of course, using this information as a base. In November of 1910, while meeting, you know, under the rules that they was going out and dunk hunt, um, duck hunting, that that was what they claimed they was doing. So all of them got right. together. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and they broke down how this climate of all these banks in which that was, that people was running to them and taking out their monies and they was finding out that their accounts was closed and so forth and so on. Mm-hmm. And they wanted, what could they do? So... J.P. Morgan, you know, comes up with that concept. Now, there was an individual who did not go along with that concept, all right, and um, he was an Astor. It was Jacob Astor, um, as a matter of fact, and Jacob Astor um, happened to board a ship in which that was basically designed or put together by the funding of J.P. Morgan, and that was known as the Titanic. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we know yeah, the Titanic, funny. right? 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it sunk, right? Iceberg, oh, yeah. Sunk, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Killing Jacob Astor and other influentials individuals who did not agree with the centralization of the banking system. Hmm. And Jacob um Astor was a billionaire and could have rivaled JP Morgan. You know what I'm saying? His family line, that is, of the Astors, and could have rivaled J.P. Morgan, you know, in which that was um, very close to the Rockefellers, um, you know, John D. Rockefeller and so forth and so on. Mm-hmm. So um, these were the hunters who came under this rule, who came under saying that, um, you know, that this is what they was doing was hunting. All right. Um I'm going to go over some of these names, but I'm going to give you the positions of these individuals now. And you had Senator Nelson Aldrich, who headed the R and RI, you know what I'm saying, and who headed up the National Monetary Commission, which was a congressional committee dedicated to developing ideas for a central banking system. Now, Frank Vanderlip, he was of the Rockefeller's National City Bank. Paul Wahlberg was up the investment for the Kuhn, Low, or Loeb and Company, who was there to promote the German central banking system of Bismarck. Now, Charles Norton was of the First National Bank of New York, which was a Morgan company, and mm-hmm. Davidson was a partner of J.P. Morgan. So from the start of this group proceeded, you know, um, into – putting this together, and they did it covertly. So by 1916, um, Forbes discussed that Jackal um, Island and these individuals, matter of fact, they called it, check this out, this this was the name of the book that um, B.C. Forbes put together. He called it Men Who Were Making America and Illuminates. Once again, Men Who Are Making America and Illuminates. Mm. Illuminates. So, of course, the word Illuminati. Yeah. So today, the finances of Frank and Henry and Paul and to another and the late senator remi- uh, remain that Nelson to them until he's dead. Now, check this out. In other words, they all said that they was going to coincide with this. They all agreed with it. So now Benjamin Strong um, came on a little later on, but there was a magazine article by Forbes um, in which that mentioned the conference, you know, then – who actually didn't mention the conference until actually 1930 um, with Paul Wahlberg's book, The Federal Reserve System, Its Origin and Growth. Um, there was another book called um, Nathaniel Wright, um, Stephenson's book, Nelson um, W. Eldridge, A Leader in American Politics. Mm. All right, so these books came out. So basically, plain and simple, the Federal Reserve, as we know, is not part of the federal government. The Federal Reserve, um, it is not federal, and it does not have any reserves. In fact, right. there's no more federal than what, FedEx? <laughs> exactly. Right? It yeah. is a privately held corporation owned by stockholders. Mm-hmm. That is why the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and all others is listed on the Dunn and Bradstreet Reference Book of American Businesses. Right, Northeast Region 1, um, Manhattan, Bronx, according to Article 1, Section 8 of the United States Constitution, only Congress supposed to have the right to issue money and regulate this value. So it is illegal for private interests to do so, yet it's happened. And because of the provision in the Act, the Class A stockholders were to be kept secret and not to be known. So um, R.F. McMasters, who published a newsletter called The Reaper, through his Swiss and Saudi Arabian contacts, was able to find out which banks held a controlling interest in the reserve. Now, remember, we broke down to you that um, the individuals of these banks in which that was connected to the back of your Social Security card. Remember, we told you A through L, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Where they were located at. It was the Federal Reserve Banks. Now, check this out. Those interests, those interests, control the Federal Reserve through about 300 stockholders. So the interest is controlled by 300 stockholders. The real owners of the Federal Reserve Banks and the federal system are, one, Rothschild Banks of London and Berlin, 
mm-hmm. Lazar Brothers, Bank of Paris, Israel Moses, Sif Bank of Italy, Warburg mm-hmm. Bank of Hamburg and um, Amsterdam, the Lehman um, Brothers, the Lehman Brothers, Bank of New York. Now, check out now the Lehman Brothers. They filed, check this out, right before Obama came in in 2008, they filed bankruptcy and they was able to get more money by becoming part of that um, part of that deal in which that Obama put together for the, uh, what was it, $70 billion. Mm-hmm. So what, you know, what, what was that became known as? Y'all remember? Yeah, it became known as the, uh, um, oh boy, uh, the, uh, damn, what, what was that? Boy, the back of my head, too. It was the, 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 the Obama, uh, it was the, oh, man. You might as well go ahead and say it, but I can't get it out of my head. All right. So this was the so-called um, the stimulus program. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you remember, exactly. the stimulus program uh, was the issuing of $7 billion throughout the various systems, in particular corporations and the banking and mortgage companies and insurance companies were the main beneficiaries of that money. <laughs> so we took out a deal from $700 billion from out of China, in which that actually comes, um, $70 billion, excuse me, from China, in which that actually comes up if you do what is called fractionalized banking, that actually comes up, which is inflation, that actually comes up to $700 billion <laughs> that we have to pay back. Okay, I just want to make that clear. So you have the Rothschilds, the um, the Lazar brothers, Israel Moses, um, Warburg, the Lehman brothers, Kuhn Loeb Company, Chase Manhattan Bank of New York, and Goldman and Sachs of New York. And most of those are Zionists. Exactly. So anyone who comes from Goldman and Sachs, such as um, Timothy um, F. Geithner, who was the last United States Secretary of Treasury, <coughs> he was um, the head of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. And he was affiliated with the Goldman Sachs, in which that um, was part of the former, all right, who was Paul, um, what was his name? The former United States Secretary of Treasury, who was part of Goldman and Sachs. All right, that was um Paul, um, Volcker. Paul, no, not Volcker. Volcker. Right now, right now, Volcker. Now he was. Now he was also was part of this too. All right, in which that this is how they come together in order to put the individual in place, known as the head of the Federal Reserve Bank. All right, and we remember who was the head of the Federal Reserve Bank for a long time. You might not remember um who's the director now. But he was in the news all the time, you know what I'm saying, before Obama came into office. Mm-hmm. And during the last um, um, years of um, Bush, all right? All right, y'all might remember oh. Glasses. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, his name was uh oh boy there I go again. Uh, you go right. You don't get uh, it this time. You don't get it this time. I got you. I I feel you. You don't get it this time. Uh, that would it be? No, nah, his name is Greenspan. Oh, Alan Greenspan. Yeah. There you go. That Alan knew it's Alan with a G, right? <laughs> another Jew. All right. He was the head of the Federal Reserve Bank for a long time, all right, um, you know, during the Bush's administrations. Greens, right? man. <laughs> right. Greens, mm-hmm. another Jew. So this is a Jewish consortium, better yet, a Zionist consortium, all right? So this is the manipulation of Jewish funding, money. Fiat notes, etc. Mm-hmm. All right. So this is what's going on. So of the reported 
2,053 shares of the New York Bank, the Rockefeller's National City Bank has 30,000 shares. Morgan First mm. National Bank has 15,000 shares. Chase Manhattan National Bank has 6,000 shares, which, of course, that's Rockefeller again. Right. Matter of fact, Rockefeller National City Bank, Morgan First National Bank, Chase National uh, uh, National Bank. That is David. That's David Rockefeller, who's yes, the sir. founder of the Trilateral Commission. Right, who's the founder of the Trilateral Commission, 1973? Right, I'm doing a Steve Copley number tonight. I'm not playing. So the National Banks of Commerce, Morgan um, um, Guarantee Trust has 21,000 shares. And as of June 15, 1978, the Senate report called Interlocking Directory amongst the major U.S. corporations revealed that the New York, that the five biggest New York banks had 470 interlocking directors, all right, with 130 major U.S. corporations. In other words, it was all tied together. Citicorp, 97. J.P. Morgan, 99. Um, Chase Manhattan Bank, 89. Manufacturers um, Hanover, 89. And Chemical Bank, 96. With David Rockefeller sitting at the helm, <laughs> all right, who's the head of the Trilateral Commission, who's the Council on Foreign Relations, CFR, and Bilderberger meter, in other words, top Illuminati, hmm. all connected. Hmm. All right? So we, we got to put that out there so y'all can go and do your research. You know, exactly. cause, you know, if you don't believe me, get the um book. It's called Secrets of the Temple, How the Federal Reserve Runs the Country by uh, huh. William um, Gridier, G-R-E-I-D-E-R, Gridier. So it's called, and it was a New York Times bestseller, The yeah. Secret of the Temple, How the Federal Reserve Bank Runs the Country. Hmm. Now, according to um, um, Eunice Mullins, he states that these banks are major stockholders in the Fed. In his book, World Order, he says, that these five banks are controlled from London. Mullen says that besides its controlling interest in the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, the Rockefellers have developed important financial interests in other parts of the United States. The entire Rockefeller empire was financed by the Rockefellers. No, no, excuse me. The entire Rockefellers empire was financed by the Rothschilds. Mm-hmm. This is what he And this is what um, Maya... M. Sharothchild said, he said, permit me to issue and control the money of a nation, and I care not who makes its laws. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? So this is another Jewish consortium, as we were talking about. M. Sher, uh, Maya M. Sharothchild and John D. Rockefeller. Once again, John D. Rockefeller is, um, is being financed by... Um, by M. Sher, um, um my my uh, my M. Sher Rothschild. Rothschild okay. no joke. Exactly. All right. Um, matter of fact, they say on uh, my M. Sher Rothschild, when he passed, he had six hundred billion, no six hundred trillion dollars in gold alone in just his in his basement. Now you know hmm. how he got that gold. You know how he got that gold is because he financed. Another individual who killed 25 million Africans, all right, in Zimbabwe, uh, which was formerly known as Rhodesia. Uh huh. Yeah. His name is Isu Rose. Right. Wow. And you ain't talking about Federal Reserve, no? You said gold. Right. This yeah. Is gold. Mm-hmm. Right. Six hundred trillion dollars of gold in his basement alone. Wow. Wow. All right. Basement. <laughs> right. In his basement. Uh, who can That's mess a big that? Basement. Who, who can pop right. that? Exactly. That that was a good question, brother. 
That's a big basement, man. Yeah. It's, oh yeah, that's 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 something, isn't it? <laughs> so it would be imperative that we also begin to start getting our hands on precious minerals. I mean, wouldn't that just make sense? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. That's the real they, wealth. They giving out they they keeping six hundred trillion dollars of real gold in their basements, but then issuing fiat notes. IOUs, promissory notes for <laughs> so for the peons can utilize and, and telling you to sell your gold for right. cash. And they, right, and they and right and they have set up pawn shops now to sell your gold and your silver. Any but broken they said, if any broken gold, please break it on down. You get two, three, four hundred dollars for it. Come on now, come on, bring your goddamn gold on down here now and get this money. <laughs> Your gold for cash. The gold something. is the the real wealth. The what you right. what you getting back is 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 the monopoly money. You ain't getting no exactly. money. You get zero back. Exactly. <laughs> you get monopoly money back. The gold is the is the money. Right, but I don't think they, I don't think they believe it. So let's go to the Constitution. Now. Constitution <laughs> for the United States of America states Article One, Section Eight, C L. Point five. It says Congress shall have power to coin money, regulate the value thereof, and of foreign coins. Article one, section ten, CL dot one says no state shall make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debt. So the only thing in which that can pay a debt is something of real substance. Exactly. Yeah. But that's the reason why the House Joint Resolution in one night of 192 in 1933, June 5th, 1933, put together by Franklin D. Alano Roosevelt, put together this deal. That's what it's called, the New Deal. Yeah. And in this New Deal, gold would not longer back the, um, the notes. No gold would back the note. And as a matter of fact, they made the people, the enemy of the state, for those who hoarded gold and silver. It wasn't until President Reagan signed into a position back around 1982-83 that he gave the ability of being able to own gold or have gold again as a so-called U.S. citizen. Hmm. Now, of mm-hmm. course, this never applied to us to begin with because we're not U.S. citizens to begin with. Exactly. So we should have been doing, so during the whole time we should have been gathering money, real mm-hmm. money, something of substance during this time period. Yeah. All right, because we, we know what happened when you just build something and don't have anything of substance behind it, you get a rosewood, you get a huh. Oklahoma greenwood, mm-hmm. okay, you know, which is a bombing of thirty six, basically of thirty six um, blocks. Of laundry yeah. mats, banks, Black, movies, Black Wall Street, Black Wall Street, right? Mm-hmm. We call Black Wall Street. Who was on import and export business worldwide throughout mm-hmm. the United States and worldwide, nationally and internationally. Man. But because they didn't have anything of substance behind it, or they might have had something of substance, but it was stolen, just like the gold was stolen in Iran. The gold was stolen in Libya, and we know this. So oh, yeah. Hussein, billions of dollars in gold missing. Yep. All right. Yeah. Um, Qaddafi, Federal Reserve notes. Qaddafi had billions of, do- billions of dollars of gold missing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it's possible that we did have something of substance, but guess what? In no history book that I've ever read. Concerning uh-huh. Tulsa, Oklahoma, have they ever mentioned it? Yeah. And they this won't. Is this is something that we probably need to talk about. All right? Yes. Because there's an example of the fact that during the Ultimate Empire, before it ended in 1914, that there was a fact that we gave the Europeans $25 million in gold. All right? This yeah. has always been about amongst them all that we gave them 25 million dollars in gold 
Now, of course, the value of that now is astronomical. Right. Yeah. All right? We talking about in the early, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, with the end of the Ultimate Empire by 1914, by 1956, our flag was given back or stripped from us from being able to be flown here and given back to a country in which that now gained their freedom known as Morocco. But yet during the time when we was flying the flag here in the United States as Americans under Prophet Noble Drali, that flag was being flown during the um during the years when they seen the rise of the Moors. The rise of the Moors came in nineteen thirteen with the Canaanite temple coming into order. The same time JP Morgan's put together the Federal Reserve Bank. Hmm. Coincidence? <laughs> no, I doubt I, I doubt it was. A year later, the Vatican puts together the papal state and they actually make the Catholic Church, the Vatican, a state within the confines, but yet separate as a body politic, a religious body politic in Italy. Mm. In Rome. Mm. So I like in work <laughs> right, so it's in Rome, but it's separate as a religious body politic mm-hmm. and its own state. So as Rome is a state of Italy as we would say, the Vatican is its own state called the Papal State. P A P A L. The Papal. The Papal State. Hmm. Coincidence? Hmm. And this was done hmm. a year after the establishment of Prophet Noble Jali, um, of him, Brother Emir, and Brother Solomon Muhammad put together the Canaanite temple, known as the old Canaanite temple today, all right, May 1st, 1913. Hmm. Hmm. This is no coincidence. Yeah, he was looking to count or something. Right, so with the rise of the Moors, they seen the remnants of the connection pieces happening and taking place here. And then, of course, by 1928, with going through the Prophet of Julie, going to Havana, Cuba, we find that he was given documentation in which that showed that he owned, or it came from the bloodline, in which that owned more than three fourths of the land known as America. In particular, the 13 states was Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida on up into Montana, South Dakota, North Dakota, Missouri, Kansas, parts of Texas, Arizona, Colorado, as well as also several others, all the way up into the whole of Canada. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is why it's called the Moorish National Divine Movement of North America. North yeah. America, because Prophet Muhammad only more than three fourths as being the royal regent, being um, the Mason Rouge, the head of the Mason Rouge, which means that he was a prince, all right, a royal royalty of the royal bloodline of the Washington Turnica family, of the Washington property known as the Louisiana Purchase. So. Being that he was tied to land, being that he had his nationality as being a Moor, being that he had his religion, he was being recognized as a head of state or head of states at the Havana um, Cuba Pan American Conference. Yeah, he doesn't wear that title noble just for show. That's the real deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. Right, so 
No, there's no such prohibition against Congress or any delegate power to make anything illegal tender. Congress was originally understood to have no power to make anything legal tender outside of the federal territory under Article 1, Section 8, CL.17 and Article um, 4, Section 3, CL.2. Um, but in 1868, a United States Supreme Court pact by President Ulysses S. Grant in the legal tender cases allowed Congress to make money, currency, issued by the United States Treasury, backed by gold, legal tender on state territory, a president that remained controversial to this day when courts allow paper currency not backed by anything to be considered legal tender. Yes. So that's how that came into play. So according to most Moorish historians, only about the first 10 amendments called the Bill of Rights apply to us. Right now, if you look up the Seventh Amendment, it says the only money amount in, in the Constitution or his amendment is the Seventh Amendment. Now, check this out. In suits at common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by a jury shall be preserved. No fact tied or tried by a jury shall be otherwise reexamined in any court of the United States than according to the laws. Or the rules of common law. So if you want to come under common law and if you want to be considered as a sovereign, how many pieces of silver do a more needs to have in order to declare themselves to be sovereign and to invoke common law or to seek civil remedy under Article 6, which is the treaties or the supreme laws of land? How many pieces of silver based on the Seventh Amendment that we just read? Hmm. It will have to. Uh, right. It will, it says it will have suit. to. Go ahead. So it says in suit that common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed twenty dollars. So that means there must be at least twenty silver dollar coins for more to declare themselves being sovereign. So you're just talking okay. about you sovereign and don't have a silver bond certificate attached to your. Documentations that you have filed at the county recorder, you can't mm -hmm. invoke common law, nor can you seek civil remedy under Article Six. Mm. Technically, wow. I gotta get yeah. on that, man. Yeah, I gotta get on that right away. So you need yeah. dollars in silver coinage. Yeah, it's just that it's just a fact. So you're not sovereign until you do so. Because where do coins come from? Silver comes from out of where? The land. Mm-hmm. Well, and... Comes out of the land. Right? Yeah, and notice what you read earlier. You said coin money. So the real right. money is the coins or, or the, coins. the silver. Right, because it is actually what? Silver, money, gold, copper, in other words, currency. In currency. other words, mm -hmm. right. In other words, that which produced current. Yeah. When you take gold, silver, take copper, hook them up electrically, it will produce what? Currency. Energy. energy. Mm -hmm. And this energy is found in the ground. And the word oh, more, and the word more is synonymous to what word? The land. land. You the get land. It. You get yes. it. So hence, that's what? Sovereignty. That is your nationality. That's when you proclaim that. Otherwise, you just a Negro claiming to be sovereign, a Negro claiming to be a Moor. Mm -hmm. You don't have 20 pieces of silver, you can't declare yourself as such because the currency, you have nothing... Um, um, to produce electromagnetic properties in the ground or to help you as a moor. Most moors, when they are intelligent, walk around with at least three pieces of silver in their pocket, mm -hmm. in which that is 99.9999% actual silver. Wow. 
So you say you got to have copper also, huh? Right. Any any type platinum, gold, silver, copper, anything in which that is produced as far as coinage, that's real substance. That's real money. And the word money stems from the word what? Moon. Moneta. Moon, exactly. Moneta, exactly. That's so, where Moneta came from, moon. Right. So, so Exactly. So let's break that down. Esoterically, the word money originates from the English word moon and the Earth's natural satellite, which in the occult teaching symbolizes silver. Right or wrong? Right. Right. And also in the occult symbolisms or teachings, yellow, which is the sun, symbolizes gold. Yeah. As in the yellow, as in the yellow brick road. In the oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, break it down okay. more. This is yeah. not by accident. However, the noun moon is derived from the word moony, M-O-O-N-E, which was around 30, about 1380 um, A.D. Hmm. And that developed from the word Monet, M-O-N-E, around 1135 hmm. A.D which derived from the Old English Mona, which dates back to 725 A.D., which, like the dramatic languages, it ultimately stems from the proto-dramatic Manano. In the word Manano, the word moon influenced, the, as we know, the water ties of the earth and the watery fluids in the body, especially in the woman, her 28 days menstrual cycle falling Phases of the moons every 28 days. Now, that means she symbolizes the silver principle or the feminine principle at best. The principle in modern English, the adjective pertaining to the word moon is lunar, derived from the Latin word luna, which is, you know, of course, you know, the word lunatic, or one who, who is driven crazy or mad, hence the lower self. So hence, this is why in 1 Corinthians, um, Timothy, the 6th chapter, the 10th verse, it says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Yeah. Okay? Because the love of money, not having money, because it's essential. All right? But when you become obsessed with the currency in which that is outside of you, instead of mastering the currency with inside of you, then that becomes evil. Okay. All right? Because the word evil spelled backwards is the word live. And the thing in which that makes you live inside of you is this silvery, mercurish color substance known as the kundalini. Mm -hmm. Come on with it, boy. And it's no coincidence <laughs> that this is silvery, that this is also a silvery color also. As you know, mercury is silvery in color. Yes. All right. So, we understand this information, these sciences, but we want the people, the audience, to understand the realness of all of this because there's a lot of misinformation going out and is not being explained properly. And that's the problem. There's a good book called Coins and Paper Money, the fifth edition, written by um, Arlen. Streber. All right. Allen G. Streber. Coins and Paper Money. Check that book out. And it goes into the information about the Coinage Act of April the 2nd, 1792, the Coinage Act of March the 4th, 1900. Dollars defined. You look up the, dollar, the word dollar defined, dictionary and statutory definitions of money, 1856 through 1996. It says, excerpts from 1923 congressional records states that the Federal Reserve and several large banks deliberately contracted to extend credit to the agricultural industry for the purpose of eliminating many farmers. So that's how they were able to eliminate the farmers in order to bring in the grocery store by the 1950s <laughs> because there was no grocery stores before the 1950s. Mm. Everybody ate off the land. So the Federal Reserve Bank is the one in which they set up these grocery stores in order to extort money and to eliminate the farmers. Mm -hmm. 
oh. and they're still doing today with them passing on Pacific congressional records or congressional bills in which that states that the people no longer have the ability in order to sell their own products to each other. Hmm. Wow. And they have, and they actually don't have the ability in order to even grow their own crops on their own land. Hmm. And definitely not to sell to each other. So all wow. these, um, laws are being passed and we see how the Federal Reserve Bank play into that particular thing. And then, of course, the gold confiscation of April the 5th, 1933, as we was talking about by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, with the um, Joint House Resolution, or what's called a House Joint Resolution, um, 192, June 5th, 1993, I mean, 33, in which that established paper-for-paper paper system. That's basically what it is, paper-for-paper. Paper. So now you can pay paper, you know, debt with paper. And you do that for, and you do that through a negotiable instrument, a promissory note. <laughs> and the biggest promissory note and the biggest bond and the biggest chattel paper and the biggest warehouse receipt we went over last week and we told you that's your birth certificate. Yeah. Huh? Yep. Mm-hmm. Damn, I just gave, I just gave you all the clues that you need. So okay. money um, is dead folder. So check this out. It says revealing statements. From public figures, Title 31, United States um, um, Code 5103, defines legal tender. This is what it says. you got to go and look that up. It defines it. But it says, constitutionally applies to non-state U.S. territories, such as federal, federal enclaves created under Article 1, Section 8, CL.17, or incorporated territories under Article um Four, section three, CL.2, is what? Virgin Island, Guam, Puerto Rico, etc. That's where the Federal Reserve Bank actually has the ability in order to um, do their legal tender act, but not in the United States, as they recall, mm-hmm. which is actually of America. America is not of the United States. There's a difference. Um, mm-hmm. We spoke about before. Now, one has a superior position. The superior position is to that of America. And you look mm-hmm. up the definition of America before 1937, it states that the aboriginal call it copper natives. So, right yes. there, they already, they already showed you that, <coughs> that we are the money because we're copper colored. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You yeah. see that? Yeah. Uh-huh. The word more means land. Here we are being described as Copper colored. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln, mm-hmm. who's a Moor, is put on a copper penny. Yeah. And turned to the right because he was a yeah, Roman Prussian, as compared to those on the silver-looking money, nickel, or you know what looks like a nickel. Ain't none of that stuff, you know, real now because before um, 1982. That's when you had real copper pennies. Now it's zinc and some other alloy. Uh-huh. Yeah. But neither is the nickel a real made from nickel. Neither is um, a dime, quarter, half a dollar. Uh, none of these things now are actually high amounts of silver. A lot uh-huh. of it is copper and now mostly zinc alloy. You can go do your research on that information. You can see what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Right? So go to the book called Antebellum Money Cases, including some um, Civil War legal tender cases compiled by Larry B. Craft. Get that book. Another good book is called Gold and Economic Freedom by Alan Greenspan. We just spoke about Alan him. Greenspan. Yeah, because before he became chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank, he had strong opinions, which he had never repudiated. And this is from a book in 1966 that he wrote. Right? So, Pieces of the Eight by Edwin um, Varira. All right? What is a dollar? Historical analysis of the fundamental question in monetary politics, also written by Edwin. Trash in the Constitution how misconstruction of the monetary powers and disability 
subvert the founding father's intent. That's why Edwin too. Money. What's his name? Edwin um, Viera. V i e i r a. V i i r a. So those are the right. three piece of the eight. What is a dollar? Trash in the Constitution. All right. Money issues. Mandar- um, memorandum of law by Larry B. Kraft. Mm-hmm. A cabot against injustice or an inquiry into the evils of fluctuating mediums of exchange by Roger Sherman. All right. And the tender clause of the United States. And the monetum. The monetum. Mm-hmm. Right. The monetum, which means the money. All right. These do are, you have any books? I mean, I mean uh, interrupt you. Do, you. do you have any of these books in your uh, library? Yes, I do. Store? Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have some of these. I don't have all of them. But some of them. Um, okay. Some of these twenties, you probably will have to go to um, the the actual Library of Congress or go to a good library or have them order it if possible. Okay. Okay. Jekyll Island book, you definitely get it. You probably can get that in anywhere. Uh, oh, yeah. You know. yeah. Definitely yeah. get that. Definitely get that Jekyll Island book. You need <laughs> yeah. Because that put, that put you on point about this information that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Right? It will put, put a person on point. You know? Okay. Yes, uh, you were speaking about the Vatican uh, being a separate state within a state from Rome, Italy, and and the rest of the country in Italy. Uh, that's the, yeah, you you were right on the uh, money about that. And uh, yeah. also, go ahead. In, go ahead Al. Yes, in, in England, uh, a lot of pe- people don't know that they have London, and then you have Greater London. Right. Which is also a separate state within London, England. Right. Exactly. In England itself. Like the Vatican and Rome. Which yeah. is, I think, the citizens, I think, uh, a little bit over 5,000. Right. Well, well, let, let's let's go to some more books because I love this shit. Yeah, the books. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is where we mess them up every time because we come with scholarship. So, um, Exhuming of a Nation, the biography of Noble Drew Ali, written by um, Swiss Angel, e, um, Elihu Pleasant Bay, Montauk, the Book of the Dead by Peter Moon. And what they break down is that getting back to Roosevelt, he was sworn into the United States presidency um, January of 1933 and wasted no time in getting started with the bankruptcy. And the United States bankruptcy was expressed in Franklin Delano Roosevelt Executive Order Number 6073. And six one 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 and six two six zero. Now you can go and get the United States um, Senate reports on this under the Trading with the Enemy Act of nineteen seventeen. So they made us enemy of the states. Mm. Mm. And that was codified by the United States um, Code, Title Twelve, Section ninety five A, and the House Joint Resolution one ninety two, um, January the fifth, nineteen um, June. 5th, 1933, confirming in Perry versus United States, 1933, a case citing that 294 United States 330-381 and United States Code Title 31, Section 5112 and 5119, and it says that Roosevelt immediately shut down the banks down during the banking holiday and proceeded to pull out all the gold out of circulation while replacing it with a debt currency tender IOU. And the United States is um, basically, you, y'all know that the, United, that the United States is paying tribute to the Moors. And they, yeah. and they have to repay that $25 million in gold loan that we made with the United States government in 1861. Mm. So the United States Congress is responsible to repay, uh, which <coughs> is right, the seat of the Moors, the all-seeing eye, that pyramid, is on the back of that dollar bill. Yeah. 
Grace Bill, the more this. Right. That's yeah. the remembrance of them having to pay us that $25 million of gold loan. So now, for those the, who don't understand, now, for those people who don't understand what the hell I'm talking about, you go to the book United States of Barbary Powers by David Magnucci. And he says in the book that the United States, England, English, French, Dutch, Dane, and Sweden, and I may say all nations are tributaries to the Moors. Once again, mm. once again, David Matricci. Now, this is what he said. The European nations paid tribute to the Moors well into the 19th century. And David Matricci proves this in his book, United States and Barbary Powers. He said, United States, English, French, Dutch, Danes, and Sweden, and I may say all nations are tributaries to the Moors. Hmm. Yeah. Are they still out today? Yes. David Marichi okay. goes probably check this out. In his book, Ancient and Moderate Britons, Volume 1 and 2, he states, the Moors have controlled the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. This is why the United States Marines saying defeating the Moors from the halls of Montezuma, which is Mexico, to the shores of Tripoli, which is in where? Gaddafi. Libya. Um, in Libya, exactly. Confirming yeah. in the source the extent of the Moorish Empire or the dominion of a Mexican or Atlantis. Mm. The United States is not a nation nor a nationality. Only American is. And who was defined as Americans before the 1950s as being such was the copper colored natives. That's it. You take a pen, yeah. put it next to my skin, your skin, brother Olabala, your skin, brother L, and we match. The That's pen. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, so we know who this is talking about. So the United States is of America, but America, Alba Rock, is not of the United States, meaning one has these period positions that I've been talking about. Nevertheless, American is a national. And this is why Nobu Dali said, I need all support from all true American citizens of the United States of America. Help me to save my people who have fallen from the constitutional law of the government, which is in what his divine warning by the prophet for the nation. By Prophet Noble Drali. He did not say United States citizen. He said the United States of America. And he called us what? American citizens or true American citizens. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Not U.S. citizens. There's a difference. U U.S. Right. citizens or corporate citizens. It's a corporation. Exactly. Exactly. And this, and this is the law. SCR 1795, Pin Hollow versus Dow. Administrators, um, three United States, 51, and it says this is a United States Supreme Court that they was trying to hide. But check this out. It says the United States um, Court of United States, 1795, said in as much as every government is an artificial person, an abstraction or a creature of the mind only, a government can interface only with other artificial persons. Mm. So it's this is how they was able to make us into strongest homo, which is the straw man. Your name spelled in all caps because they cannot function with interaction with natural persons, which is indigenous. No. Yeah. Right. So they had That's to be two persons. Your name had to be spelled in all caps on paper, chattel property, chattel paper. So the imaginary, right. however, neither actuality nor substance is foreclosed for creating and obtaining Parity with the tangible. So, in other words, being that you are attached to that particular document known as that bond, which is that word bondage, that birth certificate, um, yeah. you not pay for anything in which that transpires attached with that birth certificate. So, if you commit a crime, then we know that within um, all crimes are civil, and there is a amount attached to each offense. Murder mm -hmm. is four million dollars. Yeah, that's why they say they're going to charge you with a crime. Charge you. And they ask you, do you right. understand the mm. charges? And they ask you, do you understand the charges being brought up against you? Yeah, it's a charge. The deal with energy. It's a charge. Right. You understand <laughs> the charges charge. being brought up against you? And of course, any good person who understands law, they would say emphatically no. I do not understand the charges being brought up against me because, number one, I'm not a U.S. citizen. 
The court has to address that case. So, therefore, this court lacks jurisdiction. It is. Number two, what venue is this? Is this common law venue or is this amorality venue? I need to know that if you want this case to proceed, then I will have to be um, able to go into the proper venue. So I can know if I'm going to deal with constitution, which is common law, if I'm going to deal with contracts, which is amorality. Mm-hmm. Well, if you say you understand, you actually Ooh. step into the jurisdiction, you're hanging yourself. Yes, sir. Exactly. And and, and that now you become responsible for the bond on which they attach to you. And there's three mm-hmm. bonds, the big bond, performance bond, and the payment bond. Yeah. And it's so subtle how they do it, do you understand? Yeah. It's so subtle. It, it, it sounds, you know, I mean, I mean, just by hearing that, you would think, oh, yeah, I understand, but you don't even realize <laughs> that you're hanging yourself. Right. You just tell them there's no, I do not stand under you in this matter. Is that? No, I don't understand. I, no, I do not understand. Say, no, I do not stand under you in exactly. this matter. I do not stand under you. Exactly. So, there's another good one called Hell versus Hinckley, 201, United States 43 at 47, which was in 1905. And check this out now. This judge said there is a clear distinction in this particular case between an individual and a corporation. And the latter has no right to refuse to submit its books or papers for examination at the suit of the state. So a corporation can't refuse books and papers. It says the individual, however, may stand up is for his constitutional rights as a citizen, all right, or as a non-citizen, as long as he's a national. He mm-hmm. is entitled to carry on his private business in his own way. His power to contract is unlimited. That's what the Constitution states, too. He owes no such duty to the state since he received nothing there up, there from. So and if you're not receiving any benefits from the state. In other words, if you're not on... On welfare, if you're not on social services, if you're not um, disability, if you're not receiving anything, um, then it makes it easier for you to uh, detach, disattach yourself from this corporate fiction that they have set up. Yeah, it does. And he's entitled to carry on his private business in his own way. His power to contract is unlimited. He owes no such duty to the state since he receives nothing thereof. But they're from beyond the protection of his life and property. His rights are such as extent by the law of the land, long um, antecedent to the organization of the state, and can only be taken from him by due process of law in accordance with the Constitution. Amongst his rights are the refusal to incriminate himself, which is Amendment 5, and the Immunity of himself and his property from arrest and seizure, except under a warrant of law, which is Amendment 4. He owes nothing to the public so long as he does not um, trespass upon their rights. Upon the other hand, the corporate corporation is a creature of the state. It is presumed to be incorporated for the benefit of the public. It receives certain special privileges and and, um, and franchises and holds them subject to the law of the state and the limitations of the charter. Their powers are limited by law. It can make no contract not authorized by its con- charter. Its rights to act as a corporation are only preserved to it so long as it obeys the laws of its charter. Okay? Yes, yeah, so, I... I uh... I I I, I uh, draw disability, you know. Right, but, I understand. Uh, right, but, uh, but you have something on the documentation. You have something already on record on which that state. Um, you have a denial of corporate status. You also sure have do. A, right, and you also have a negative avertment. Yeah. And you have an affidavit of facts and affidavit of truth in which that bears witness to your nationality and your citizenship that you are right. Washington. Right, they got they uh, the Social Security Administration guys has all copy of those. Right. So he, exactly. Mm-hmm. So here it says the United States of America Incorporated. Check this out. Now you go to Delaware Corporation, Incorporation date four nineteen eighty nine. This is the file number two one nine three nine four six. It says that the United States Incorporated is a religious non profit organization. 
This is in the Delaware um, site of the IRS. And guess what they say? They said it's not good standing. So the United States of America Incorporated is not in good standing. <laughs> wow. Wow. Now, check this out. The definition of the United States. Now, you go. Now, now you can go and check this out. This, this is in title codes now. It says the definition of the United States. Title 15, United States means, A, a federal corporation, B, an agency, department, commission, board, or any other entity of the United States, or an instrumentality of the United States. So what is the United States? It's a federal corporation, an agency, a department. Mm-hmm. So that means the only way that the government can actually um, mess or gain jurisdiction over a natural person, which is, i.e., an indigenous person, is by you contracting with them and letting them transfer you or transform you into a or cap letter name or into a corporation. Uh-huh. Without you having yeah. any backup whatsoever on the public record. Now this 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 is something good because you get the book Count Gorney's book. Um, he's the author of The Ruins of Empires, and it was translated by Joel Barlow, seventeen fifty uh-huh. to eight twelve. He himself was an American statesman, and he was well known for drafting the Islam a pleasing Treaty of Tripoli. Now check this out. Uh-huh. In which that stated that the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. Now, this is in the Treaty of Tripoli, the 8th Statute 154. This is in the Treaty of Tripoli now, written by Joel, um, translated by um, Joel um, Barlow. And he states that the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. So where they got all this Christian shit from? <laughs> Every <laughs> president got to come along since Bush to say that they Christian. <laughs> when everyone knows oh, that dude. they should recognize the United States is Morocco, which was an Islamic or is an Islamic country. That's right. That's what the American citizen is. I'm uh, Moroccan. Al Moroccan. Another one that's saying Moroccan. Al Moroccan. Uh-huh. Exactly. American. Al Moroccan. And that's the reason why the Europeans can't be Al Moroccans because they're not colored corporate natives. That's right. Aboriginal. You can't be. You're not Aboriginal. Right. You're not Aboriginal. Right. You're not they're Aboriginal. Still, yeah. They're still that's why. That's why this bullshit about sovereign citizens is bullshit because the only way you can be sovereign is if you're from the land and tied to the land. Because if you're from England, Ireland, from any other country from Europe, then that's where you can go and find sovereignty at. You can't find sovereignty in a country, in a land in which that you do not originally belong to, and you do not have ancestral ties to. You yeah. ancestral ties to those countries in which that you claim that you are from. You ask the European their history, and they will tell you, oh, I'm Ireland. I'm from Ireland. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm from um, England. Oh, I'm from um, Belgium. I'm from Romania. I'm from, okay, well, all of that is over there. Yeah. That's not you say, you, know, when you say sovereign, you, you're right. definitely talking about nation and nationality. So, you know, so right. just by you saying sovereign or sovereignty, you're, you, you, you're talking about a nation or a, nation, your, a nationality. So that connects with that. So you can't just just throw that word out there by itself and think that means something, you know. Because exactly. soon you say that you that 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 connects with the words nation and nationality. Exactly. The only way that a exactly. European considers sovereign is he comes to those who are the indigenous people of this land and gain a title of sovereignty. He can be titled sovereign, but he cannot be sovereign because he's not of this land mass. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have. That's just. just, I, have, just uh, I have. Uh, 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 discussions with certain brothers that are Moors, and try to almost debate with a man that don't, they're not sovereigns; they're title sovereigns. Exactly. You know, you know. Repeat that again. Right, they're, they're not they're sovereigns; not. they're title sovereigns. 
And actually, they're not even entitled to them because they haven't asked permission from those who head organization, nation. Okay. <laughs> now, yeah. this is what the United States is a religious corporation now managed by the Queen of England and under the control of the Vatican. The Pope's laws are obligatory, are obligar- um, 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 obligatory on everyone. If you read Benedict um, 14, um, from out of their particular book, I think it's called um, um, the Synods, Dionysus, and it says syllabus proper, or property 28, 29, and 44. Therefore, all said Moors contracting with the United States, all right, or USA, or corporate property, or child property of the Vatican. Okay? Hmm. And you can go to www.mantamanta.com website, which is owned by Dunn and Brad, um, Bradstreet. And you can go and do your research. And if you research the private corporations called the United States of America, you will find that the owner is listed as being Archbishop Derek J. McLeod of the Basilia of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception out of Washington, D.C. Wow. In other words, the Archbishop of the Vatican. Yeah. (laughs) Right. And since the archbishops of the Vatican are sworn to poverty, then the archbishop can only be named agent of the secular so-called Roman Empire situated in the city state called the Vatican or Papal States. And according to the elements of Ecclesiastical Law 20, the Pope can abolish any laws in the United States. And the reason why is because it is now a religious corporation or a said Christian society now. Since what? Since 419, 1989, my birthday, I might add, that was my birthday that they did shit on. Oh, man. Right? In 1989, I was 21. I came mature at that age, and at the same time, on my birthday, they filed as a religious organization, United States of America Incorporated. Now, you can go and get um, this information, which I'm talking about. Um, um, there's a brother of the Yamases, um, um, two brothers from the Yamases, um, who is dropping this information. You can go and check them out. It was that they talk about this. All right? So, this this is why we have to get into this, because we sh- we see all these connection pieces here. Okay. Yeah. Now, for those who don't understand, once again, um, who Noble Drali was, he's the son of Corella Turner, Turnica, the sister of Prophet Noble Drali. All right. That's who um, Prophet Noble Drali is the son of Eliza Turner and John Drew, who was a kitman or quitman, which is a Cherokee. Okay, full blooded Cherokee. All right, so in the oral statements and prophecies of Prophet Nobadrali, he states that the morals of the offsprings of kings and queens. Mm. This is what he said the morals of the offsprings of kings and queens. Now, That's this right. makes, Now, this makes sense because if you go to Return of the Serpents of Wisdom, written by Mark Amaru Pinko. He has your name, Olabala. That's right. I got that book. Oh, man. <laughs> he states in there. Now, this is a, this is an amazing thing. He states in there that the original inhabitants, the indigenous people of this land, who we know are the Americans, are Moroccans, he said that this land was known as the land of the immortals. And that the word Amaru Ka, Amaru Ka, means the serpents of wisdom. That's right. Mm. 
and that this is the land of the of the immortals, the land of the immortals, meaning that the Moors are the offsprings of kings and queens. Right. Mm. Kings. <laughs> okay. And this royal imperial bloodline has never been broken. And it comes by way of the Washington, which um is the word is the last name Washington now, and Turnica, which is the last name Turner now. So if you related to any Washington and any Turners, you will see that the only ones in which that have these particular names are so called black people, Moors. White uh-huh. people do not have the names Washington or Turner. Like Denzel Washington. Is that yeah? <laughs> Denzel Washington. Is that exactly. Turner? Exactly. Right, Matt Turner. And that's yeah. why that's why he was giving him that Turner lick because he like, oh, you don't know, my shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very okay. good. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that's, it, it's amazing when you drop the science on us that. Uh, the nations of the world uh, give uh, trip giving tribute to the Moors, mm-hmm. Earth, you know. And, and man, if, if the people, uh, I'm saying they're Moors, but they're not nationalized Moors. If they just wake up and just really see, really how important they are to the world to the rest of the world. But the rest of the world, like China and everybody else, is just waking for the rest of our people to wake up. Right. That's what they're waiting on. But I don't think they're going to wait too long, too much longer, though. Right. Really and this is, the reason why, this is the reason why they give tribute to um, Brother L, because the Prophet of Jali actually gave up the story. Um, he told the Moors that the Europeans went to the Moroccan government, remember, and asked for permission to come over here to America to develop this land. And they were given a 50-year mandate to do so. So we leased them the land every 50 years. Hmm. Then the Europeans went to the old sheik and asked him to give them some people to help them to develop this land. And the sheik told them to take those moors because they were not doing anything. They were because they was not going to do anything. So this, wow. is, a, so this is a direct reference to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship in Morocco and the United States. That's what I was going to ask you. Man. Right. No wonder it's the longest. But no wonder it's the longest treaty in, 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 in the history of the world. You got it. You got it. That's the key. That's the key. <laughs> really, it's to benefit the European more than it do us. Exactly, because it gives them a fifty-year extension every time that it is signed. And notice that in the nineteen eighties, um, the Prince of Morocco was not going to sign it. And he ends up getting killed in a boating accident. You can look this shit up, too. Hmm. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So you notice we're not playing tonight. We're giving it all up. Y'all better oh, soak it up. Y'all better soak it up. Yeah. Thank you. Right? And, and get him back. Yeah. And for some more, they say some people ain't ready. You take you. You give them too much. You give them too much. They ain't ready for certain uh, uh, knowledge yet. You well, know, for them, was, well, real simple. For those who ain't ready, close your ears. For those who are, stay your ass online. <laughs> or take the blue. Or take the blue pill. Right in the matrix. Take the blue exactly. pill. You know. Right. Take the blue pill. Yeah. But if you ready, to, but if you ready to hear this shit, take the red pill. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and getting back to what you were saying about the Cherokee and those that most people think are Indians, they were Moors. So as yeah. far as watching the Long Ranger and, and, and thinking uh, Johnny Depp, uh, uh, you know, people that look like Johnny Depp are the ones, no, they look like us. Yeah. You know, they, they, look, they look like, you know, Dr. Alim, you know, so... You know, they look like you. Yeah. So I think that they did that movie to throw us off, too. Because why now? Why, why do something like, like that now? Exactly. 
you know, they keep th- trying to throw us off. Oh, Johnny Depp. Oh, okay. So we don't have a reference point. Oh, no, that's you. Yes. Uh, they uh, were not in there. They were Moors. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Uh, I had my, my portrait of my great great grandmother's mother sitting in my lap, and this uh, European woman uh, looking at the portrait, then she looked at me. Then she looked at me, then she looked at the portrait. Then she looked at the portrait and looked at me again. And I turned my head around like Cora, but I never asked her why was she doing that. Because I guess she was seeing that both of us was the same. Is yeah. that the rich place? She saw a lot of me in her. Right, right. Yeah, this is a lot. I mean, if you saw it, Mother Allah Bala, you asked Mother Aline, you know she was, <laughs> she was a Moor. Or yeah. what they call, so called Native Americans. Yeah, well, why would you be holding the portrait of her? I mean, that was, that's, I was, that was something there, personal. Yeah, I was getting ready to take a, take a portrait picture. And there were other yeah. people there. And uh, a lot of, some some of the, the, the photographer asked me, you, you know, he asked me, uh, who is that? I said, that's my great-great-grandmother. Oh, so oh, you must be Indian. I said, no, 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 I'm more. You know, so the other people taking their pictures, and I was just sitting there, you know, with the portrait in my lap, you know, waiting for my turn. You know, I had my fares on. Uh, by the way, I didn't even tell you, I had my fares on. Yeah. Taking the, me to take the portrait. And this uh, European woman was sitting across from me, and she kept looking at you no, know, kept looking at me in, in the in the portrait. I mean, kept looking, you know, like she like she couldn't hardly take her eyes off of me and, and the portrait of my great of my great great grandmother. Yeah, powerful. Like she was startled. She can't. <laughs> yeah, I could just imagine the portrait, and then then looking at the portrait, you know, I know she. She looked powerful in the picture, like wow, you know. Yeah, she does. You know, think of it. Yeah, she did. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course she did. Cause that, I mean, you know, I mean, think about what our ancestors went through. You know, you look at certain people, you you could see that they have wisdom. You know, they enlightened people. You know, you know, and some people have. You can almost see their aura field around them. You know, certain people it feel that. Their energy when you when come in their presence, you know. You even gotta mm-hmm. ask them one thing, you know. You know, mm-hmm. so de- definitely, you know. Yeah. But, uh, just like I was explaining in the other show, uh, my cousin told me her aunt said that we're related to Geronimo. And I mm. look at the picture of Geronimo, and I look at my grandfather, because you know that's on his side. You know, my mother's father. And I could see, I could see my grandfather in him. As I look at him, I'm like, okay, I see the cheek, the the, the chin, the jaw, jaw, you know, the, the bone structure in his face. I could see it. I could see it. And my and my brothers, I mean, my grandfather's um, brothers have wavy long hair. And I used to look at them like, what's mm-hmm. up with these brothers? You're like, what's up? Why the hair so get, long? You know, I just, get, some, did we, get some pictures of get some pictures of more. Get you know, go to a, 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 a photo, uh, a photography uh, uh, studio. And then just get a you know, stand by oh, him and yeah. take a picture with him. You know. Oh yeah. Oh, oh they uh, made a transition. Uh, they made trans. They transition, but. Um, you know, I could okay. always find that because my grandfather, he, you know, he was a photographer. You know, he got a lot of pictures. Okay. Yeah, so I could put it together. You know how we can do that now with technology and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But definitely. But, but the key thing is what we were saying before, it, uh, when you were saying subject to, people don't realize when they hear that word subject to what that means. Right. You know, uh, when it, when you hear on the train, uh, all bags are subject to random search. Subject to, you know? yeah. You don't want to be subject to <laughs> no any anything, <laughs> you know? especially not the government. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So that, that that's the thing that people have to understand what that means, you know. Oh yeah. You're under jurisdiction. You're their you're their slave. You're their property. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. you know, and so when they talk right. about the Fourteenth Amendment about the uh, rights, they're talking about civil rights, which are granted privileges, just like you said. Right. Exactly. They, you any, know. Any, anything after the Tenth Amendment is, is void. Uh, uh, any the Nineteenth Amendment that's dealing with women, you know, well, then in that case, then women never did have a right to vote. Mm. If that's if that's the case. You know, uh, too, man, uh, I was wondering why uh, President Babe was talking about the 19th Amendment so much in his book, uh, Assuming of a Nation. Right. But uh, that's what he was talking about, uh, the 19th right. Amendment. And he said these women don't have these rights like they think they do. Right. Because uh, now they had... Uh, uh, now they have uh, in a certain state of gay marriage. And then, oh. they, uh, then when they said under the 14th Amendment, I said, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, they don't. <laughs> they tricked yeah. they, they just kind of tricking these people. And these, but the majority of the people of, of, of this country really don't know uh, that after the uh, 10th Amendment, there are no more real amendments. Right. They don't know. Right. They just don't know. Okay. I talked to a, a, I went to visit my aunt today in a hospital, and I talked. Her name was Chinese, and uh, I asked her as a second Chinese person I, I talked to, and I asked her. I said, uh, when you sign documents and applications, do you when they ask you what what is your race, do you put yellow there? Then she said no. She frowned up no, like the other one did. I, I talked to, and she said no. Those are colors. Those are not people. People are not colors. That's what she said. Exactly. So, see, they know this is a fiction. Exactly. So, we have a black woman out with certificate, right? Uh huh. And and that's the reason why you have to ask why in the hell do they have black on our birth certificates? Yeah. Yeah. Some people got Negroes. Some people got Negroes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those in which that is my mother' age, which is around seventy. Some have have Negro, and um, even beyond that, some have colored. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Mhm. No, they uh, 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 I, and that told me, and that and that backs everything what we talk about uh, the nights, the preceding nights, and then tonight. Uh, as we speak now, uh, let's show that we know what we're talking about. You know, right. uh, this stuff is real. You know, it, it is, it's man, as real as night and day is itself. You know, right. <laughs> this is not a whole lot of hot air we're talking. You know, no. so when are these people going to wake up? Uh, they want to march their way out of this. They want to march their way. Yeah. They, they want to pay for those marches. You know, the people who they are marching against. <laughs> yeah, they're they, getting paid at the same time. Man, that's yeah. wild. Paying yeah. for security, which is the uh, police force, because they pay for security when they rented the space. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Man, you know. <laughs> so when they talking about, so when they, when they talk, when they cursing out the police officers, they cursing out their security guards that they hired for the day. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, how rude can they be, right? Yeah, that's exactly. true. They, they do a security for you, and you cursing them out. What's going on? <laughs> you, hired, you hired them. So they exactly. and wonder why they mad at you. <laughs> yeah, they like, you hired me. You know, they, like, you, know you put it on. They, they don't know. They don't know. Okay, we don't know. Hey, you don't hear something. <laughs> Yeah, people like Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, they never, yeah. they, they never, uh, they, they never tell the people about uh, the term black or African no, American. Right, there's four Negroes that they always throw up in our faces. You got, you got Jesse Jackass or Messy uh-huh. Jesse or Messy Jesse, as um, Dr. Collie referred to him as. 
So oh, you have you have you have um um Al Sharpton, Mr. Do himself. You know, you lost all that weight, but goddamn that he got a bobblehead now for real. Okay. <laughs> he he, yeah. he do he do got something on the brain now. He got something on his mind for real that he need to say to someone. Thanks for all. Because that dome is humongous. If you see a picture of him now, that he ain't nothing but head. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. mm. all right. Yeah, so he comes out when you get slapped. He comes out because you got to get right. slapped first. Right. <laughs> when you get slapped, exactly. he comes out. Why you slapped him? Right, then you have the Harvard professor who says a hundred billion big words, but yet nothing in which I've seen concrete. Mm -hmm. What is his name? Nothing. Uh, Oh, he's talking about uh, Cornell (laughs) West? Thank you, you got it. And then, of course, you have Eric Michael Dyson. Or Michael Eric Dyson. Oh, he's going to rhyme his way. He's going to rhyme the thing. Talking about Tupac right. and then right. right, and his um slick fast talking ass. So you have yeah. these four, you have these four Negroes who they always throw up in your, and neither one, and none of them, even though they know, you know, Al Sharpton knows and Jesse Jackson know about Moorish information. I've seen them with pictures with their feathers on. I've seen them down there on Doctor York land before um oh, in the yeah. um in the mid the late nineties. Oh, yet, yeah. Uh-huh. They have yet said anything. So, obviously, that's the secret, you know what I'm saying, is not to build that nationality portion because that ends their manipulation job. That ends them being able to acquire money from these particular corporations and shake down yeah. money. That's how they say Jesse Jackson made his money. Wonder how Jesse Jackson, who's never had a job in his life, never held a po- political business position, never. Uh-huh. Um, Never been in a been in the church. Never held the church position. Never ever as a as a minister, reverend, pastor, bishop, or etc. But yet is a millionaire. Multi. Well, well, he's um, a reverend, so he's a five hundred one c three. So he's not paying taxes. He set up a little. <coughs> he set he set up the organization, which the which is tax taxes them. Mm-hmm. Right. He set up the rainbow. But guess what? Do they exist outside of Chicago? <laughs> mm. Well, you could just do that on paper. It don't really mean that. We just talk. We've been talking about corporations all this show. Exactly. It's all only on paper. It's only on paper, exactly. So this <laughs> is the thing that is taking place, right? But this, this, this is what we're trying to expose the people to is to go and do their research, and you will find out. And these individuals they always put in front of us, and these are the four same damn individuals that they always bring in front of us. Just notice that. Always the same four individuals. Anything yeah. happens, CNN yeah. goes to the same niggas. Yeah, you got to get slapped yeah. first. Well, yeah. Right, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, somebody got to get killed, and then they come out because they get paid off the nigga problem. Yes. Yeah. Right. Of the nigga industry, exactly. That's how they get paid. Yeah, the that's nigga, nigga industry. Yeah. While they right. know that we all are moors, and they've got they wear feds when they go to their large meeting, so they know what time right. it is. Right. They make sense of shriners themselves, exactly. Of course, they know what time it is. Oh, yeah. So stop playing. Stop playing. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So for those who want to know more information, go to our website, www.drlenelbay.com, www.drlenelbay.com. That's D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y, www.drlenelbay.com. Go to the website, go to United Washington Tours History, go to United Washington Tours Reclamation Process, Go to the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World. Um, find out more information concerning this information that we dropping on you tonight. You're not going to find it um, anywhere on the radio this far in depth and, and exposing um, what's really happening and what's going on um, and correlating it back to you. All right, that's the key. You correlate this information back to you. 
you know what I'm saying, as being a real American, all right? Otherwise, you know, we can bleach that out and then we just give you some old hollering shit like, you know, Alex Jones. Mm-hmm. You, you're frustrated you know? because you don't have a remedy for the problem, so the only thing you can do is get frustrated and get mad and want to hurt somebody, but when you feel that, uh, if you know that you got a way out of it, then uh, you'll be a little more calmer and you just work towards the solution rather than just, you know, be huffing and puffing and slamming stuff down, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And for those exactly. who want to plan, ask questions, number is 626-414-3535. Call in, ask questions, 626-414-3535. All right, so... Um, we're going to go to the closing remarks. I don't have anyone online. I was That's what I was looking at here. Um, so let's go into closing remarks. Brother Olabali, you got anything that you want to close with um, concerning the like a summary of what we've gone over tonight? Well, the bottom line is, you know, uh, and I always say this, you know, basically, you know, a lot of people at this present time, you know, as far as the Trayvon Martin case and and plenty of other cases that's coming up, you know, people are very frustrated and they and they see that there's no uh justice and and they seem like there's you know, they see there's no way out of this situation. But there is a way out. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. And personally to, I believe personally I believe that that's a ploy in order to make us have to search for a way out. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because um, in a lot of ways, it could have possibly been that Trayvon thing could have possibly been a hoax. If there's a, there's a new um, video, YouTube, out now in which that um, goes into how there's no death um, affidavit or report for Trayvon Martin. You know, and another thing to which that is happening. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we need to investigate before we start start lending our emotion, you know, um, you know, to those in which that is controlling um, the situation. That's why it's called mind control because no one is utilizing your mind and controlling it at the same time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you know, it's it's ways of dealing with, you know different situations, but you can't deal with it as a U.S. citizen, as a corporate citizen, uh, 14th Amendment citizen, which are all the same thing, right. and uh, must proclaim your Moorish nationality. Uh, if you if you don't have an understanding of that, you know, you have to do your own personal studies, but this is why we set up these different uh, ways of Gaining the information like the blog talk shows, websites. So keep tuning in and, uh, you know, keep on studying. And I will plug this as well. Uh, you, you can also come to Facebook uh, slash Morris Divine and National Movement. This is our Facebook group that we set up to, uh, you know, connect on Facebook online, you know, which is a public forum. And when we have, you know, different things coming up, we can uh, post information about that. So tune in to that as well. You know, plug in to Facebook slash Morris Divine and National Movement. This is our group. So uh, I'll leave you with that. I right. appreciate you, Brother Ola, for coming on tonight, my co-host. And Brother L, um, any closing remarks? Uh, yes. Uh as soon as I get get a, get a really hang of that, how to, to deal with uh, the internet and the computers and everything, I will tune in to you, brother, on Facebook, and you will be okay. hearing from me. Yes, oh, sir, yeah. Right. That's it. And I will, and, and brother Aleem, I will contact you uh, soon about the, some silver. Uh, the class of silver from you, uh, twenty dollars worth of silver from you. And we'll right. talk about that later. All right. And, all right. and for those who want to know more about that, the coins, uh, we have everything posted on the website also. 
Um, if you go to www.drdalimelbay.com, that's D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y, drdalimelbay.com, you will see um, that we sell um, um, coins such as copper coins, silver coins, gold coins, and um, check us out, you know. Um, the prices are good, reasonable, and we're going to go to the phone line right now to get a question. This is every report now. Nine Eric Code Nine Nine, you're on. Peace. 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 Eric Code Nine One Nine, you're on the line. Come on in. Peace, can y'all hear me? Yes, yeah, sir. we got Peace. you. What's going on, Dr. Elaine? How y'all doing? Oh, well, well, I just had a quick question. I didn't mean to put my hand up so late. Uh, like, Dr. Aleem, is there a way to, like, contact with you or, uh, like, set up a consultation or something with you to you? Uh, is it my understanding that you can assist everybody or, you know, assist more as they're trying to get on the right path or whatever? Exactly. No doubt about it. Give us a call at 910-364-9099. That's 910-364-9099. All right. All right. Is there a best time to contact you? Um, you can do it tomorrow between um eleven and seven. All right. Well, all right. That's all I wanted to know. My name is Madison. I'll be getting with you, Dr. Right. Early. Appreciate you, Guard, for checking this out. All right. Mm. All right no Thanks for calling. Oh, no problem, brother. Oh yeah. Peace. So. Getting ready to head out, and um, it's my man Nas and Damian Marley with patience, and we're gonna see y'all here uh, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. First World yes, Order Radio will be here, and we will have our co-hosts, Brother Olabala, and also Brother Grand Sheik, Brother RL, and both all both of them will be with me as well in the building with First World Radio, and we will be going over more in-depth information. And as you know, we're the best listening sounds. You know what I'm saying? Not we're not WBLS, but we are the world best listening sounds. All right, so, <laughs> all right. Yeah. so so um, so check us out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're 
we're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. 